Welcome back on the last day of 2020, or at least depending on your time zone, it will be the last day of the year. At least it is for me. And today I wanted to share with you the case of Mary Clement. It's a different Mary, but it's another interesting wiki concerning a woman that was supposedly, well, suspected of killing people. But the weird part is that they stated that she was never charged in the deaths of the people she was assumed to have murdered. So let me narrate the details and then you can make up your own mind perhaps, or maybe you can't, because I sure can't. This case is old as hell, so it doesn't really matter. It's still interesting, as I always say, from a historical point of view. It states the following, that Mary Clement was also known under several aliases. She was a Luxembourgish-born American serial killer who poisoned her parents and two of her sisters at their home. Although never charged in their death, she was later convicted of attempting to poison her sister's family and sentenced to a year in the Joliet prison. Now she was born in the little village of Harlan to parents Michelle and Marguerite Clement, the second of five daughters. In 1871, the whole family immigrated to the United States, settling in Dubuk, where three years later the last daughter Annie would be born. Mary was frequently described as slender, rather pretty, and prepossessing in manner, but due to a defect in her spinal column, had only partial control over her legs and feet. Beginning in 1880, the little sister Annie was suddenly seized with convulsions and died shortly after, her death later being attributed to eating too much before going to bed. During the following years, her parents and sister Lena died in similar circumstances all of them passing away from convulsions or heart failure after suffering through an unidentifiable illness. Two months following the burial of her father, Mary moved in with her sister Catherine, her husband Michelle, Freiris and their two children in Rose Hill. On several occasions she cooked meals for the family and each time they would be overtaken by violent vomiting and spasms. Michael eventually grew suspicious of Mary as she always refused to eat any of the soup she served. One day he found a pack of grayish colored powder in his backyard and after eating some soup in the morning and again began vomiting, he noticed a sediment in his plate that looked like the mysterious powder. Upon further examination he found more of the substance in his wife and children's plates. Puzzled he brought the powder in the plates for an analysis with the attending physicians Dr. Isaac Paul and Professor H. S. Corbett revealing that the powder contained, can you guess, like all the previous cases? Yep, we got another case of arsenic, it's, it's so popular man. Maybe I should get some for my own, own neighbors. Uh, uh, never mind, I never said that. I never said that at all, I, you must be hallucinating. On following this discovery, Mary Clement was arrested shortly after. While imprisoned, she initially vehemently protested that she was innocent crying uncontrollably for two days and claiming that her sister had accused her for the sole reason of obtaining some $100, which Clement supposedly had. However, when later questioned by a reporter, she confessed not only to the poisoning of the family, but also killing her mother, father and sister. She said that she had suddenly been overtaken by a feeling to end her ailing mother's misery before eventually doing the same to her sister and father. When asked if money was the motive, she retaliated by claiming that she hated the money and had spent it quickly to get rid of it, before experiencing a hysterical fit in which she threw herself at her cot and demanded to see a priest. Two days after, she was interviewed by a Dr. Bloodheart, and during said interview, Mary claimed to have never made the confession or that if she did, she remembered nothing of it. When later asked if he thought that Clement was insane, he denied it, instead saying that she suffered from several disorders that made her extremely nervous and sensitive. At her trial, Clement observed the procedure closely, but did so unnaturally calm and expressed nervousness so rarely that even the press remarked how out of character it was. Despite this, with Michael Ferris as the main witness and the several people who presented that there was evidence of arsenic poisoning, Mary Clement was quickly sentenced to a year in jail by the jury. The following month, she wrote a letter confessing to her crimes, including her youngest sister's murder, shocking associates who still considered her innocent. 
In it, she also expressed her pleasure with the short sentence. Or pleasure with the... Well, she is right, though. I mean, only one year after knowing that you murdered your own family? That's amazing, man. She got away with it. She freaking got away with it, this feisty little girl. Well, after her release, Clement moved out to Los Angeles to work as a domestic servant for a wealthy family. According to the family members, she never talked about her past, but was known as a nice old lady who liked to wear elaborate hats. She died at the age of 81 and was later buried at St. Henry's Church in Chicago in the Ferris family plot. So she tried to kill her own family and then she got buried next to the family she tried to murder. Ah, oh, they're such a cozy little family even in death. Well that's all there is they had on the case of Mary Clement. What do you think about it? Well, personally I think this one sounds even though it's still crazy to kill your own family, obviously, and poisoning people, obviously, it's crazy. It is a little less intense than some of the previous cases we shared already. Because some people, they go completely haywire while they're poisoning people as well. This one seemed a little tame. So I guess that may be a good thing. Does that even make sense? Am I like... Am I like sticking up for a murderer? Maybe I am. I should stop this video right here and enjoy this New Year's evening. Anyways, hope you have a great New Year. No arsenic poisoning, please. Keep the poison at bay. Stay safe. Don't get poisoned. You never know what somebody's gonna try to do to you when you go outside at night tonight. And I'll see you in the next year. As always, dear viewer, have sweet dreams.